Namaste and welcome once again, teachers. This uh, workshop is going to be a purely interactive workshop. All of us are experienced teachers and we are just going to share our experience and get the maximum benefit out of it. This workshop is planned for uh, finding ways to introduce a topic. The idea of finding ways of introducing a topic is just to create an interest, motivate the students and capture their attention. That is the idea behind finding different ways. So we understand that we need to do a lot of preparatory before we start a topic in the classroom. So before going into the actual session, uh, what are the objectives of teaching environmental studies? Not just a subject. We as environmental teachers have lots of responsibility on our shoulders. Now, uh, I want to hear from you. How do you feel to be an EVS teacher? What feel you have to be an EVS teacher? How do you feel? Every subject is unique and important in its own way. I feel being EVS teachers, we have little more responsibility towards the society, towards our environment. In this subject, we are going to teach them the uh, real situations of the environment, the various uh, environmental issues around, and we are going to sensitize them towards it, and we are going to help them understand their role towards the environment, towards the protection of the environment. So let us understand this objective of the environmental studies. So this is the objective of environmental studies. It exposes the students to the environment. It creates an awareness. Now, as teacher, what is our role? Having known the objective of the environmental studies, what is what do you think is our role as an EVS teacher? Teachers, please. To make them aware about the environment, environmental issues, how we can overcome with that. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So, having understood the objectives of the environmental studies, these objectives have to be safely carried to the classroom, to the young minds. So, we have a greater responsibility of making the children understand their role on this earth. Recently, our school started collecting empty milk packets because it is... Uh, 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 filling the land and polluting the land. So in the idea of creating an awareness among the children and we EVS teachers were expected to explain and talk more and more about them, about the uh, land pollution and uh, we were asked to uh, create an awareness and we were asked to um, uh, motivate them to bring more and more packets. So once we started talking about this in the class, the children started collecting the milk packets from their neighborhoods also. So a small uh, information that you carry in the classroom create a greater impact for the environment in the surrounding and in the minds of the young children. At, at class three, the children may not be knowing that they are doing a great contribution towards the land pollution. But out of enthusiasm, they are going and collecting around. But at one stage, they will definitely understand the real meaning of why they collected the uh, uh, milk packets and what is the uh, greater contribution they have done towards protecting the uh, environment, protecting the land. So small, small gestures that we do in the classroom create a greater impact in the children. So let us carry the objective of the environmental studies in the classroom, inculcate the important uh, awareness in the young minds and make them a better citizen tomorrow. Repeatedly insist that you are going to be the future citizen. The future world is going to be in your hand. So if you want a smooth living on this planet, you have to start working from this day. Every day in your class, please insist this. Yes. So it is activity time now. And uh, does the picture give you any idea about what activity we are going to do now? Any group activity? Group activity. What is it? What activity? 
something like reading comprehension okay it's a story time okay small story children time. always like to listen to stories so you can make stories your own stories you can pick up your own stories to introduce the topic you need not find it anywhere else we can make our own stories so just an activity uh, all of you i want all of you to please take part in this activity the observe the given picture carefully take a minute and i want each one of you to make a sentence to build a story the story the first person would have started it as a horror story the next person who is continuing it maybe may turn it into an adventurous story a normal story whatever it is so four children not four i'm sorry six children started on a trip along the river side this is the beginning of the story now i have begun the story i want each one of you to please continue yes teachers they played in a river and played near the river and enjoyed they played near the river and enjoyed now our story is slowly started building up now who is going may to I, may yes ma'am yes ma'am uh, namaste ma'am good evening ma'am yes ma'am one boy was uh, sitting in the river and suddenly uh, some movement starts started and he Excellent. was not able to recognize that he was sitting on a tortoise Excellent, excellent, ma'am. Thank you, thank now, you, ma'am. Now, who is going to continue this? The children went along the riverside. They started playing. A boy All and children sitting on. Yes, ma'am. All those children discussed with each other how he, we can uh, protect that boy from that movement. Excellent. How we can rescue the boy? Yes. Okay, excellent. Now, who is going to continue? This? at that time the two girls started to plan to rescue him excellent excellent the two girls who are watching the boy started, started to rescue yes ma'am they were planning to excellent who is going to continue so the theme of the story are... has become the rescuing the boy yes yes ma'am they are they are planning in a such a way to rescue the boy safely okay they are planning to rescue the boy safely so that he doesn't fall inside the river okay yeah. so what happens did they when, succeed in rescuing yes ma'am then they started looking around and check whether they could find any wood log so that they can lay it on the uh, across the river so that the boy can walk on that excellent ma'am they are planning to drop a log of wood so that the boy can catch it and come on to the show excellent next the that girl tried to pull the log and the keep of the rock like that there is yes, yes. one girl yeah. trying to pull the wood from the plant the tree. very good very good excellent ma'am so they started looking for a log to drop it onto the river to rescue the boy did they succeed in that Yes, they have succeeded uh, once the wooden log has been started floating. Very good. So they they succeeded in finding a wooden log. They dropped it onto the river uh, into the river, and the boy caught the wooden log and came out of it. So does uh, did the story has the story end ended? The small story. There are lo lots to learn, like the objects that can float or sink, the values not hurting animals. but it is not a tortoise let us make it a turtle tortoise never gets into the water okay so ma this, this ma is, yes ma as well as as well as they can know more about the nature more about the nature nature they can know more about the nature Please. so a picture can uh, like this can be showed in the classroom and the children may be asked to develop their own story what do you think is the benefit of showing a picture and making a story this improves their creativity creativity yes we can and improve their language. attention also ma'am excellent we can so improve the communication skill also ma'am excellent this improves their communication skill this improves their language skill actually the children need to have lots of creative thinking 
to sustain on a long run to help instill the creativity in the young minds so that is about the activities in the classroom what do you think is the importance of activities it is actually a great management tool that kindles the interest of the students and keep them attentive they become more motivated to learn and participate in all the classroom activities games improve their concentration memory language teamwork and creativity also when you conduct activities and when you involve all the children in the activities the children gain uh, self confidence they learn social skills problem solving skills when the children engage with each other in the learning tasks they remember material better and they figure out how to apply and extend their new knowledge more effectively addition, this approach promotes learning among students from diverse background and who have diverse learning styles so when you do such activities even the average and the below average students who uh, never involve themselves in the classroom activities will volunteer will be on their toes when we do such activities so at the primary level we teachers have to think of more activities in the classroom mix it up with the teaching learning process so that all the 40 get uh, your uh, get the learning matter and uh, the attention of all the 40 is on the teacher so with that we will actually move into the agenda of today's session so today we are going to discuss about various ways of introducing a topic to the students important topics to be covered while teaching the concepts in ebs we have one lesson which have many sub topics so each topic has to be introduced in such a way that the learning is interesting and also effective importance of the interactive classrooms helping the students with the spelling of odd words so this is where the students um Uh, miss their marks in the examination though they know the concept orally they will answer but when we put them into actual writing they struggle a lot to remember the spellings of odd words so this is also one area which we have to definitely cover in the classroom and we need to plan different activities for different top topics so that this is going to be our agenda for today's session so let us take what are the elixir of life as the example lesson and let us uh, find uh, different ways of introducing a topic so introduction plays a major role in achieving our objective in the classroom you never get a second chance to make a first impression so once you plunge into a topic in the classroom with an interesting activity with an interesting way of introduction the expectation of the child becomes more on you and the attention of the children will be intact he will be expecting to attend your class he will be expecting every day for the eagerly awaiting for the evs classes so introduction plays a major role in attaining the objective if we miss to introduce it in a proper way the whole lesson is lost for at least the 50% of the children in the classroom so please give utmost care to find interesting ways to introduce the topic so what are the different ways which we can use for introducing a topic we can uh, introduce a topic using a fun game an object that is relevant to the topic may be brought to the classroom and uh, something uh, interesting questions may be posed to the children and they may be involved in the classroom and in the lesson a motivational question that is relevant to the topic audio visual aids a story which is relevant to the topic the story need not be a concrete one you can cook your own story just to make the children slowly come into the teaching and learning process so these are the different ways of introducing a topic different lessons and different topics may need different ways of introduction so what are the preparatory activities that we need to do 
before you introduce a lesson in the classroom. Um, from your experience, I think teachers can come out with one or two points. What you will actually do before you introduce a topic in the classroom. First of all, motivate them by asking a few questions, ma'am, related to the topic. Okay. You will ask number of questions to the children related to the topic. Related okay. To the topic. Okay. Even before going into the classroom, you will find some ways of introducing the topic. You will have some ways of using the topic in your mind. I'm asking you, before going into the classroom, we need to do some of the preparatory uh, things to carry on the lesson effectively in the classroom. What, uh, even by before, ma yes, by means of using some chart with yes, some decorative work. Yes, ma'am. So you will prepare your classroom for the lesson. Not only the students, you will prepare your classroom also for the lesson. Excellent, ma'am. So, Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, we can uh, make small, small chits like we uh, you were initi uh, initiating about the keywords and uh, word spellings of the words, ma'am. So we can give them uh, in a chits the words related to the chapter. And then one by one, if they will open it, they will get to, uh, will be familiar with the names that we will be using in the chapter. Excellent. Then they can get, <laughs> then they can say something about that word, what we have written in that, so that they are more clear when we are teaching the chapter. Very good, ma'am. Excellent. So you, you teachers have your own ways of introducing a topic. Before you go into the classroom, there are certain things we need to do to make ourselves comfortable and to achieve the objective of the lesson. Read the lesson carefully, line by line, and note down the important points given in the lesson. Sometimes it may so happen that some of the minor points that is given in the reader, in the text, may get missed. And we cannot do it later on. It has to be linked to the main topics also. So read the lesson carefully, line by line. It is your book. You can always use a pen to underline, a uh, highlighter to highlight so that you don't miss to carry the small important points to the classroom. Next important thing you need to do is to set the learning outcome. Uh, I hope all the teachers will set the learning outcomes before you start teaching a lesson in the classroom. What is learning outcome? What do you mean by learning excellence? Learning outcome is nothing but what you expect your child to understand, to know at the end of the lesson. So you set the learning outcomes for your children. This will make your journey in the classroom with the lesson very comfortable. You will know your goals, your objectives. You will be clear on what to teach, how to teach it, and you can start deciding on ways to introducing the topic. So arrange the learning outcomes in a proper order. How will I start the topic? What, what am I going to teach the next? So think of a way to introduce the topic and important concepts that is covered in the lesson. So these are all some of the preparatory things you need to do before you enter your classroom. Now, again, uh, a small activity for introducing the water chapter. So imagine you all are children of class three and I'm going to introduce water to you in a fun way. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures. You have to make it a little quick. If the picture shows an activity that requires water, please shout yes. If the picture, the activity in the picture doesn't require water, please shout no. You have to shout, not say. <coughs> Let's start. Ready, teachers? Yes, ma'am. Now you are free to keep your audio in mute, unmute. Ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. Yes. No. 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 Yes. 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 Thank you so much, teacher. Thank you so much. Now, uh, just tell me 
how do you feel after the enthusiastic you are also excited your expectation on me has become more so i am sure of getting your attention i am sure of getting your attention and uh, the same way the children also feel when you introduce topics uh, through such activities your uh, classroom becomes when you fill your classroom with fun filled activities like this the children will be eagerly awaiting for your classes hoping to have more such fun filled learning moments in the classroom so this is why the activities play an important role in introducing a topic once having start uh, the class the lesson with such interesting activities you are sure of getting the attention of the children and the children's uh, learning understanding of the subject matter will be more and the retention will be better as i always already told you we can attract the attention of the slow learners also by doing such activities so introducing a topic through poem as i told you there are different ways of introducing different topics under the same lesson so poem is one technique of introducing a topic stories and poems can be used to teach evs at primary level the main purpose of this is to provide contextual learning environment it encourages creative expression excites students and helps them to interact with their peers it also makes the lesson enjoyable and promotes linguistic skills so a small poem just an amateur poem not a proper poem just uh, to introduce uh, water um, will anyone volunteer to read it a little drop of water drop 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 from the clouds plop 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 help us to grow crop 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 makes a rabbit hop 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 runs into the river save 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 and joins the ocean wave 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 store it in a tank dam 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 irrigate the fields bam 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 so make your own poems sing daily in the classroom so that that the students will memorize this poem and through this poem you can teach a lot of small small information about the water now can uh, you tell me what are all the small small things we are teaching through this poem this small poem clearly tells them that the rain falls down from the clouds water is very important for the plants and for the animals too the rain water runs into the river which has to be saved 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 in a dam the dam is used for irrigating the field all the river water runs into the ocean a small poem just teaches them a lot so so when such small poems are made and repeatedly uh, recited in the classroom the children will definitely memorize and they will be at least able to answer one mark question two mark question maybe in the classroom so and also they are having some information they are carrying some information in their memory also through these poems so this is an interesting way of introducing a topic you need not search for a poem we can make our own poem okay next important topics to be covered in the lesson so that the students have a strong understanding so what are all the topics you will cover under the lesson water we need to tell them the different sources of water we need to teach them the uses of water we need to talk about water cycle while talking about water cycle we need to tell them the three states of matter and the important terms in the water cycle what are the three important terms in the water cycle evaporation evaporation condensation precipitation precipitation good precipitation so yes water conservation while during uh, while talking about water conservation we will be talking to them about the dam fresh water and salt water and animals and plants that live in fresh water and salt water and we are we are we also have to talk about the 
water pollution. So let us make ourselves clear what are all the topics we are going to discuss in the classroom. Then we will find ways of introducing the different topics. So when we talk about uh, fresh water, we need to tell them what fresh water actually means. We also need to tell them that water is a natural resource. What do you mean by a natural resource? A resource that cannot be made by man. That is drawn from the nature. That is natural resource. So also uh, help them understand the meaning of the natural resource and then help them identify or list out what are the other natural resource that are uh, resources that are found around them. So when you help them, uh, encourage them to do this, they will understand the different uh, natural resources around them and they will also understand the real meaning of natural resource. So each and every uh, small detail have to be done elaborately in the primary level. Understand the children at class three are learning EVS for the first time. When you give a strong foundation in class three, class four and five will be easier for the teachers and for the students to carry on with their syllabus. The basic information have to be made strong. Yes, so this is about the natural resources and such topics may be introduced to the ch children using mind mapping. Mind mapping is nothing but a concept that is split into different specific topics. So when we do such thing, this helps the students to generate new ideas and encourages students to discover new concepts. Mind maps are brilliant reflection tools which students can demonstrate and uh, what they have learned visually in a creative manner. So using mind maps, mind map is nothing but a diagram that shows relationship between different ideas. For example, if you're going to three sources of fresh water, a mind map like this can be made for the children to understand. This can also be made on a chart and put up in the notice board so that the children daily visualize it and they retain the sources of fresh water as rain and the glaciers, make them understand what is glacier, what is rain, make them understand what is fresh water. Each and every word, every term we tell in the class has to be explained clearly to the children. The children should not go out of the class with a doubt. Repeatedly check with the children whether I can proceed further or you have a doubt. And uh, this mind map clearly tells that sources of fresh water are rain and glaciers. Uh, the rain falls from the cloud. The glaciers or the snow that melt down of the mountain. All these, the rain and the glacier flow into the water bodies. What are the different water bodies? Rivers, lakes, ponds and oceans. A mind map like this will help the children have a clear idea about the sources of fresh water and where these rainwater falls and from where do we get fresh water. Let them understand that rainwater is the fresh water. Fresh water is nothing but the portable water which is fit for drinking. So uses of water. Uh, when we talk about uses of water, uh, this can be done as an activity, as a role play. Few children may be called to come forward and they may be asked to share their activities in the morning. A tabular column may be made in the blackboard and uh, this work also be interested to another student. Let, this uh, let the teacher explain the activity to the students and the uh, students do the activity on their own to have a better understanding. So they will uh, record all the activities activities that require water, the activities that do not require water. Help them understand that life is not possible without water. The majority of our activity uh, require the help of water and without water, we cannot live on this planet Earth. So uses of water. Children always think that we drink water only to quench our thirst. Whenever we feel thirsty, whenever we drink something, eat something hot, we drink water. Help them understand that water is also required 
for the smooth functioning of the internal organs. It regulates our body temperature, moistens tissues in the eyes, nose and mouth, protects body organs and tissues, carries nutrients and oxygen to cells, lubricates joints, lessens burden on the kidneys and liver by flushing out waste, dissolves minerals and nutrients to make them accessible. Uh, this is again age appropriate. Uh, the last two points may not be understandable for a child of class three. So whatever is required at that particular age, please make them understand. We always uh, uh, get an obligation from the parents, uh, helping them, helping us to uh, make the children drink more of water. Uh, children do not drink water unless and until we force them to. So the children have to understand that drinking water will help their internal organs work smoothly. So this has to be repeatedly insisted in the classroom. Next, water cycle. Another important topic that is to be covered in water. So this can be narrated or explained to the children in the form of a story. Mama, I actually, I taught in a different way, like we used to boil water at home. So I gave an example first, take a bowl full of water and keep it on the stove, light it on and switch on the stove. And if it's boiled, what do you see at the top of the water? I mean, what comes out of the water? So I'll start off with that and then we'll go like, so this is how I'll explain the evaporation, condensation and precipitation process. Once it starts boiling, close it with a lid and switch off the stove. After some time, you open the lid and see what is there on the inside the lid. What do you see? You can, you will be able to see the water droplets. So that process yes. converting the vapor into the water droplets that we call it as a condensation. I'll compare this process to the clouds. Yes. What is uh, actually so happening? Yes, demonstrating evaporation and condensation in the classroom with simple examples. So while introducing the water cycle, excellent man. While introducing the water cycle, you can make it a story, small story on a bright interest in the children to uh, listen to what we are telling in the classroom. And I feel when such things are done, like uh, introducing through poem or introducing through stories, it gives a uh, better uh, understanding and the retention of the subject matter is also uh, better uh, in the uh, lower yeah, classes. Yeah. So uh, put up a chart like this in the classroom which clearly explains what happens during water cycle. Help them understand that water cycle is very, very important for the uh, formation of the clouds and formation of the rain, the evaporation, the condensation and precipitation are the three processes that is involved in the water cycle. Evaporation is nothing but the water becoming water vapor. Once it becomes water vapor, it rises up, forms as clouds. The clouds on cooling condenses and becomes water droplets. These water droplets fall down. These water droplets fall down as rain. Uh, Osha, ma'am, just a minute. Ebenezer Jabarani, ma'am. Yes. Can you please mute, ma'am? Sorry. Yeah. And uh, Usharani, ma'am, may I just add on to your presentation, ma'am, just a little bit because. Yes, ma'am. Just yes. a small example. Like uh, evaporation, children might have seen maybe when they are drinking a hot cup of coffee or a tea, they would have seen evaporation. But condensation, you can just walk to them, ask them, any of them, to open their tiffin boxes or lunch boxes. You just ask them to open and definitely some every parent would have prepared it hot and put it inside. So they would see drops of water inside. So you ask them, did your mother pack you with the water drops? So definitely children will think there. Why did the, who put the water drops there? So you can inquiry method. You can ask them, did you put the water drops there? Did your mom put your water drops? How did they come inside? How did they get in? You have packed it. You have sealed it. How did, how did they get in? So they'll come up with a lot of theories. So finally, then you can uh, say them that the water, when it evaporated, it, it also starts to cool. When you uh, close it with the lid, it starts to cool. And then the process of condensation can be discussed. And the same thing like when you open a refrigerator, you take a, a water bottle, which is ice cold, and then you keep it outside. But you don't open the bottle. When you Even when you don't open the bottle, you will see droplets of water on the outside of the bottle. So why is it so? 
children again will come up with their own theory. So even then you can introduce condensation. So you can, you can bring your, your own uh, bottle of cold water also and see that how did water come out? So just inquiry-based question, let the children come up with answers also. That will also be very helpful because you will get different variety of answers from children. Exactly. Thank you, Usha, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And thank you. Uh, and uh, also the classroom becomes interactive. Each one will try to give their own answers. Actually, uh, all of us carry flask to school. So with the flask, carry to the classroom and you can easily show them what is evaporation, how does condensation happens. You can show them the water droplets and explain to them. Such demonstrations help the children to have a better understanding. So also teach them that the water exists in three states, solid, liquid and gas. And also tell them that three states of water are interchangeable. A solid can become a liquid, a liquid can become a gas and a gas can become a liquid again. So I help them understand with these simple experiments just now as Vanita ma'am said or any other experiments you can make them understand that the three states of water are interchangeable. Always demonstrating an experiment in the classroom will have a better understanding on the children and the retention will also be better for them. So water conservation is the next topic we need to talk to them. So water conservation, uh, conserving water helps to ensure that there will be enough for everyone. We must learn how to keep our limited supply of water pure and free of pollution because everyone depends on water for survival. Insist that water conservation means using it wisely and also keeping the water away from pollution. Water conservation doesn't always mean that we should not waste water. We should also keep it in its purest form. So this is something which has to be insisted, which has to be dealt elaborately. And you can put a lots of leading questions to the children and get the answer from them. What do you mean by conservation? We need to explain this to the children. Conservation means uh, keeping the, uh, protecting the water uh, saving the water, not protecting the water, saving the water, uh, minimizing the wastage of water. Why should we conserve water? What will happen if we do not save water? Think of a world without water. What is the capacity of water to, that we use every day? What happens to the water after we use? We use water for lots of activities. So after use, what happens to it? Here comes the three R's. Reduce, reuse and recycle. Should we stop using water or should we minimize the usage? When you get the answer from the students, maybe they will understand their responsibility towards water conservation. Definitely make it, uh, make this discussion for one period, allot one period for this discussion, do it elaborately. It is our bound duty, greater responsibility to make the children understand that water conservation is a serious issue which has to be dealt with Awareness towards water conservation definitely have to be created. The children should carry the message also to their uh, peer groups, to their relatives, to their friends outside so that they understand their role on this planet. They work towards water conservation at this young age. So, so while talking about water conservation, also help them understand though uh, the earth 70% of the earth is filled with the uh, water, 30% with land. Out of the 70% of the water, only 1% is available as fresh water. Also, there are many countries which are nearing the depletion of water and there are many countries which lack access to clean water. So help the children understand that if we do not um, create or uh, make an awareness of water conservation, if we do not use water wisely, if you are going to uh, waste water, then we will reach a situation when there will not be a drop of water for us to drink, for us to do all the activities. And without water, life on the planet is highly impossible. Even if you give water, we have reached a stage when where we are buying water. This wasn't happening some 30 years back. Now we have started buying water. So even if you have money, there will be a stage, you will reach a stage where you will not be getting water. Please sensitize the children towards this serious issue. The children have to understand that 
they have to work on water conservation uh, help them to uh, have an observation even when uh, during the lunch time when they go to the uh, washroom for uh, uh, cleaning when they find an open tap in the school outside the school in their house please ask them to respond immediately it is their bound duty also to stop uh, wastage of water wherever it is happening so what are the different ways of water conservation so have when we talk about water conservation next topic that we discuss is about the different ways of water conservation so such children will um, definitely uh, come out with uh, uh, things like uh, use half bucket of water for uh, taking bath uh, use a mug of water for brushing don't keep the tap open uh, repair the leaking taps and all that also uh, uh, understand make them understand that dams are constructed just to save water so where is the dam these are the points which we have to explain to the children the children at this age will definitely we have not having any idea about the dams the way it is constructed why is it constructed so this has to be explain to the children uh, only the topics that they are familiar with to be introduced by posing questions to them the topic that are little difficult that are not familiar to them please make it a point to explain to them clearly so uh, why is it constructed across the river the river water joins the ocean when the river water joins the ocean what happened the ocean water is salty so the river water will also become salty and will not be having uh, fresh water to use. So to stop the river water and to store it in a dam, a big container, which is a dam. We are constructing the dam across the river. So what are all the uses of dam? Dams are used for irrigation, for drinking purpose, and also for generating electricity. Talk to them about the dams that were built by the kings in the earlier period. Kalanai Dam even till now stands strong, which was built by Karikala. But Kalanai Dam was built only for the irrigation purpose. So it is also called as the Czech Dam. So certain things which we teach in the class has to be repeatedly. See, Kalanai Dam is built by Karikala and have to be repeatedly insisted in the class so that the children uh, retain it in their memory. Again, Kalanai Dam is a check dam. Why is it called a check dam? Because it is used only for irrigation purpose. What are all the other dams? Krishnaraja Sagar Dam, which is in Mysore, in Karnataka, that supplies water to Mysore and Mandya districts of Karnataka. Krishnaraja Sagar Dam is also used for drinking purpose. So having given them enough information about the dam, now you can give them a small homework of collecting information about the dam, uh, the dam or the lake from where they get their water supply. Let them collect small, small informations. Uh, who built the dam? What are all the materials involved in building? What are all the small, small work that are involved in building a dam? Give them a small assignment. Let them collect informations. Let them make it a small uh, passage or a paragraph and let them present it in the class the next day. Building dam, uh, the ways of building dam, the purpose of building dam has to be dealt elaborately in this class so that class four and five, when they learn about dams in detail, it will be easy for the teachers and the students to understand it from the place where it is started. We need not go to the basic, start from there. So certain things have to be dealt from the basics. So uh, when we talk about fre fresh water and salt water, the question arises, why the sea water is salty? We also teach them that the river water flows into the ocean. Why the river water is not salty and why the ocean is salty? Why? Ma'am, due to the presence of salt, Okay, presence of salt, the ocean is salty. Why the river water? River water is only going into the ocean. Why is the river water not? This was a question asked by one of my students. Just now you said, Miss, that the river water flows into the ocean. Ocean is salty. When the river water gets mixed up with the ocean, it also becomes salty. So why is the river water not salty? Why the ocean is salty? 
because of the animals that live in both sea water and fresh water, like whales and all, it's living in sea water. Okay. That no, no. My question is, why is the ocean water salty? From where the salt comes into the ocean? There is actually a because of the mineral water. content. Because of the, because of the mineral content. Because mineral of the mineral content. content, naturally, from where the mineral content join, uh, comes and gets deposited in the ocean. From the rocks, ma'am. Salt in the ocean comes from two sources. That is runoff from the land and openings in the sea floor. So when the rainwater falls on the rocks, it, is acidic and it erodes the rocks. And these minerals ca gets carried away by the river water and gets deposited in the ocean. River water is always flowing. So the minerals doesn't stay in the river water. The river, a very minute amount of salt do stay in the river water, but that doesn't add on to the taste. But all the uh, minerals flows along with this course and gets deposited in the ocean. In the ocean, these minerals are not used up by any of the aquatic plants or the animals. So the concentration becomes more and that is why the ocean water is salty. So now my point to you teachers is such things need not be explained in the class unless and until it is asked by the students. Sometimes the students will pose a difficult question to us in the classroom. So this was asked by one of my students. Actually there is a beautiful Russian story uh, that explains not explained, that gives uh, what an idea of why the uh, ocean water is salty. But that is not the real explanation. I just told the story in the classroom. The children also enjoy a man who will take a grinding stone. The grinding stone is a magical stone that gives more and more salt. So the man knows the magical word to make the grinding stone start working but he will miss to learn the magical word to make it stop. He will take it on a ship, go to the middle of the ocean and he will start ordering the magical grinder to make more and more salt. So once the salt becomes more, the ship becomes overloaded and the man very badly wanted to stop the grinder from running. But pathetically, he doesn't know the mantra of stopping it. So what happened? The uh, ship also uh, drowned the grinder which is swirling and bringing out uh, salt is also still in the ocean and this is a story just uh, entertaining story just to give a suggestion of why the ocean water is salty but this is not the explanation. The river water is flowing that is why the salt content doesn't stay in the river. The ocean doesn't flow and the salt content is not also used up. So in the course of time, more and more concentration of the salt water gets deposited in the ocean and that is why the ocean water is salty. So we have to be, we have to keep ourselves prepared to such questions. Primary level, you cannot imagine the question the children pose to us. So we have to be prepared with the answer. Let us not confuse the children with too much of information, but if required, we have to definitely give them an answer. So this explains river water are constantly being restocked by fresh water from rain and springs, thus they do not taste salty. But the ocean collects all the river water, salt and minerals. The ocean floor also contains minerals which get dissolved in the water, adding to the salinity of the sea. Let us uh, update ourselves with more and more information and whenever it is required, let us not miss to carry it or explain it in the classroom. Ma'am, excuse me. Yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry for the interruption. Because yes, ma'am. I yes, keep on getting this question in my mind whenever I teach this uh, oceans and seas. What is the exact difference between ocean and the sea? Ocean is bigger than the sea. See, that I know. Is there, is there any other difference that we can say to the students? Because I told this point to the students. Ocean is bigger than the sea. That is the difference. Is it uh, whichever the uh, places which has got seashore, that part of the uh, uh, place we call it as a sea or is it kind of thing normal? 
yeah that gives a good explanation actually you said gives a very good explanation we say sea shore we don't say ocean shore <laughs> so we can call uh, the beach as sea and that doesn't have a shore as ocean usually we give this information to the sea we call it as ocean yes oceans are bigger than the sea usually we give this explanation to the children to make them understand the difference between ocean and sea so now uh, so like this we get more uh, questions from the students uh, we wouldn't have anticipated such questions so they think better they think deeper than what we do so next important uh, topic is the water pollution so pollution is again a major concern it is becoming more and more uh, a serious issue which has to be dealt uh, which uh, uh, awareness has to be created among the young minds so that they carry the message of uh, water pollution and the ways to stop it so we have to tell them what is pollution while talking about water pollution please don't miss to talk about the land pollution air pollution just introduced to them not only water but the land and the air is also getting polluted the stress on our water environmental environment results in because of increased industrialization urbanization and uh, the availability of clean water is reduced the pollution is a great concern to aquatic organism uh, recently there was a video in the whatsapp of how a uh, turtle struggled because of a net which got entangled uh, around it and it wasn't able to move some of the volunteers who had humanity to rescue the turtle and uh, they uh, uh, cut out the uh, net and they uh, rescued the turtle so this can be some small small incidents that we come across uh, can be explained to the children in such a way that uh, they develop uh, as as that we sensitize them towards the serious issue they take this issue uh, to the to their deeper inner mind and they uh, have a strong determination of doing something against this if not now later on so let us deal the water pollution while during the lesson very seriously so that the children have an uh, better awareness of the pollution Uh, help them while doing this lesson definitely tell them that uh, the first step to stop pollution is to uh, keep your practice to keep your classroom clean polluting the classroom sharpening the pencils putting the wrappers down all that has to be avoided all major things have to be practiced first at the home level classroom level to take it to the next stage and uh, while talking about uh, uh, pollution there are two things which will be there are two things which you have to explain to them causes of pollution effects of pollution children even in class 4 get confused between causes and effects so repeatedly insist the meaning causes means the reasons because of which the water gets polluted effects the results what are all the effects of pollution means what happens to the organisms to the aquatic organisms to the humans to the water to the availability of water because of the pollution and then discuss the ways to stop pollution you can ask the children to come out with lots of ideas of the ways to stop pollution so excuse me ma'am yes ma'am ah uh, so sorry to interrupt you ma'am yes ah uh, ma'am in the class and i was teaching this i have add on one more pollution like you said land pollution water pollution and air pollution uh, i have added noise also noise. and along with that i added plastic pollution also ma'am which is very much uh, uh, means in uh, affecting the nature so plastic pollution also i introduced which is harming the aquatic animal also and um, even land also so that i have added if we can add it Yes, while talking about land pollution, we definitely talk about plastic. That is the main plastic reason pollution. our school. Yes, our school recently collected all the milk packets because it is becoming, uh, it is filling the lands more and more, and uh, uh, a serious concern in the land pollution. 
so plastic will be definitely dealt with while talking about the land pollution and uh, we have to insist the children also to stop using plastics so when we say something on the children first we have to start practicing it then we have to insist such things in the children so importance of interactive classrooms so each and every topic that, uh, we uh, deal in the classroom have to be made interactive sometimes we make a story sometimes we sing a poem sometimes we make a leading questions in the classroom uh, lots of uh, tools we can use but what is the importance of interactive classrooms it is an approach to creating an environment that supports active learning it is designed to stimulate creativity and is much more analytical as opposed to traditional rote learning one teacher lecturing and the students listening definitely the 50% of the classroom's attention will not be on us when we encourage the children to interact when we pose them questions definitely they will try to answer while trying to answer their attention will be on us and while trying to answer they will definitely think think in a different way we will uh, we will not even imagine we will get different questions interesting i mean we'll get interesting answers from them which will definitely not be in our imagination so interactive classrooms will uh, uh, help the children to improve their language skills their creativity and I, as, as i already told it will give them a sense of self confidence how to make the classrooms interactive there are certain ways uh, uh, teachers before i uh, do this slide i want you to answer this question what are the different techniques that you use to make your classroom interactive do you all believe in interactive classrooms yes yes, yes ma'am yes yes ma'am yes, ma yes, ma yes. Ma sometimes, yes. Some, sometimes <laughs> i see some teachers uh, talking against interactive classrooms can you tell me why some teachers Uh, say or uh, they don't uh, go with the interactive classrooms is there any uh, thing that is stopping some teachers from doing interactive classrooms it may irritate them or it may something like they are going in a track if some student asks a question it may this that those students may distract the topic from what teacher is teaching okay teacher uh, yes. diversion ma'am might be for uh, might be for finishing the chapter quickly yes. or uh, might be yes. they don't want to answer <laughs> okay first so yes might be elaborate of that mm -hmm. okay the, so they don't want to um uh, get uh, questions from the students they want to escape from answering the questions they want to finish off their questions fast also interactive classrooms will be little noisy little messy uh, when you pose a question there will be uh, 30 hands at least raising and uh, all of them will start uh, giving their own answers so there has to be certain rules made for the interactive classrooms before you pose your question please uh, call out the name of the child who you are expecting answer from so while doing this please uh, give opportunity to every child in the classroom don't always pose the questions to the uh, above average, average or the intelligent students okay so this will pull down the confidence of the below average um, i always feel that uh, the students Uh, who have to be given utmost care in the classrooms uh, classroom are below average and the average students because unless and until you give them a push these children will never resp uh, respond will never volunteer answers you have to make them feel like heroes and heroines of the class you have to give them more importance even if they come out with a simple answer please uh, give them lots of appreciation say excellent excellent i never expected this beautiful answer wonderful and make the others um, appreciate the child by clapping hands by, by doing all this the uh, children who are below average will definitely get an uh, encouragement to uh, take part in all the classroom activities the above average will always be there to take care of himself but uh, teachers in this process we also need to understand that if we are going to 
uh, stop looking at above average, that will also pull them one step down. So there has to be a balance. Give more importance to average and below average. Also a little importance to these uh, above average students because once when you post a question, those who are smarter will uh, cannot uh, stop themselves from telling out the answer. So before you start an interactive classroom, before you start your technique of introducing a topic, tell them that the classroom will not become a messy one. Everyone will get a chance to give an answer. Once they give a question, either raise your hand. Those who have an answer, raise your hand. And I'll call you one by one. Everyone will definitely be given a chance to answer the question. So that is why in the fear that they will not get a turn, the children will start shouting. So make a clear cut rule in the classroom so that the classroom doesn't become a messy place. Also, tell the other children that the question is for all the 40 children in the classroom. Those who don't have, have an answer, if they listen to what is happening patiently, will have 10 or 12 answers at the end of the session. So they have to listen to the answers of all their friends so that they get the answer in different angles. So before you start an interactive classrooms, make a set of rules so that the classroom doesn't become noisy or messy. There are certain interactive techniques which will never make your classroom noisy, which will improve group learning, which will uh, uh, help the children to work with others and come out with a solution to the problem. So think, pair and share. This is an activity where the teacher first pairs up the students, either two or three in a group and gives a question to them. So the children have to discuss among themselves the answer to the question or whatever is required. And one among the three or all the three will come near the blackboard in the front of the classroom and explain to the rest of the students their answer. By doing this, one question will have different answers in different angles. And the classroom will not also become a noisy one. And you will also have the satisfaction of putting everyone into the activity. Everyone will equally work for getting the answer to the solution. Misconception check. I think many of you would have done it. Sometimes while introducing something, we will come out with a wrong, we will purposefully come out with a wrong answer. So for example, I'll tell the classroom, rainwater is man-made, right children? We can easily make rainwater. So the children will immediately shout unknowingly that, I'm doing it purposefully. So uh, I don't know how many of you have identified the children uh, like to spot errors. Sometimes uh, when we miss the, while writing uh, uh, the answers in the blackboard, immediately they miss, miss, you miss. And sometimes when we miss to keep a dot on I, they will definitely come out and say, miss, there is no I. So they love spotting errors. Yes. They do very well. <laughs> exactly. Yes. exactly. Yes. So sometimes even while doing map, we will keep our hands on Maharashtra and say, but this is only Tamil Nadu, no children. So no oh, ma'am, you're wrong. This is Maharashtra. So like this way, you can involve the children in the activities. So that is misconception. Check. Uh, group debates. Again, um, splitting the whole class into four or five groups and giving them a topic and they will or splitting the classroom into two and give them a topic. So one will talk for the topic, one will talk against the topic. Again, here, before starting the debate, some basic rules have to be set and made the children understand that the classroom shouldn't be noisy and one children will talk at one time. Student pair activities. So the student will pair among themselves and they will try to find a problem to a solution and then they will present in the classroom. Crossword puzzle. So this, you can make a big crossword drawn on the blackboard, divide the classroom. You can make it like a quiz. You can give points to the children 
and uh, these points may be added to the internals also. So the whole class will try to involve themselves in the crossword puzzle, Scrabble game, making um, words out of the uh, given letters. You can give them a, a big word. I think many of you would have tried it. Uh, for example, uh, you give them a big word, photosynthesis, hibernation, migration, words like this. And you will ask the students to use the letters in the given word and make as many words as possible. This will also improve their vocabulary. And this will also, be, we will also have a satisfaction of putting them into a useful task. Uh, make questions from the lesson and uh, post it on the peers in turns. This, the children themselves will do. For example, uh, out of the four pages in the given lesson, you can ask, assign one page for one group. So four pages, four groups. The children have to make one more questions from, uh, for example, page number 20, group A will do. Page number 21, group B will do. And the next day, they will write it in a small paper and bring it to the classroom. And the next day, one group will post a question. The next group will answer the question here by making them uh, uh, frame questions from the lessons, we are indirectly involving them to read the whole lesson. While doing so, they will make questions. They will be ready to answer the questions of the other group also. When you uh, create competition among the children, the children show more uh, enthusiasm in taking part in it. Uh, wanting to win, wanting to get more scores, they will uh, engage themselves with uh, uh, full concentration and they will try to win the game. So these are some of the activities which you can do in the classroom to make it interactive, to make the students work in groups, to make the students uh, have the team spirit, to make them understand, to wait for their turn and answer. So some of the social skills, some language skills um, are also exposed uh, by doing these activities. So we can uh, use these skills in the classroom to uh, have a better uh, learning uh, uh, platform for the children. So uh, the role of a teacher in the interactive classrooms, our role plays a major part in the interactive classrooms. And listen until we are going to give importance to all the 40 students, the interactive classrooms, will never succeed. We have to value the answers of all the students. First, we need to feel enthusiasm within us. Only then we can pass on the same enthusiasm in the classroom. The atmosphere will become excited. The children will also catch up the enthusiasm and uh, listen to us with full concentration and cooperate with all the activities. During interactive classrooms, as I told you, the simple answers that the children come out with should be valued. We have to listen to the answers patiently. Sometimes, you know, some children uh, don't know to uh, answer crisply. They will uh, uh, speak for two or three lines and then come to the main point of the answer. We shouldn't uh, force the child to speak fast. It is uh, the child's way of expressing an answer. We have to accept it. And sometimes... Mm -hmm. The lesson planner will say finish off the lesson within one week. Please don't go by the lesson planners in such cases. The lessons sometimes will definitely drag to one or two days. Never mind. But we have the satisfaction of dealing all the topics elaborately. We have the satis satisfaction of laying a very strong foundation in the young minds. We have the satisfaction also of creating an interest towards the subject. I always uh, tell my friends, um, I'm very uh, soft, very kind to my students. I will never raise my voice. I will never shout at them. I will never scold them, but I know my limits. I, I know how to control the class without being very strict because only when they like me, they will start liking my subject. When they like me, they will be expecting for me to come, for the EVS period to come. Once that happens, they will automatically like the subject. So that is the first step to do. So we have to be very patient and we have to listen to the responses of the students. Help the students to solve the problem by themselves. 
we need not always spoon feed them. Just give them the outline, guide them, but the uh, answer will be uh, found by the students. They will uh, uh, find a way to solve the problems. Do not spoon feed at every stage. Let them understand to find the answer. Let them understand the problem solving skills. Help them to exchange the ideas with the peers. Doing, uh, uh, during the group activities. They have to exchange their ideas with the peers and come to a conclusion. Here, we also need to tell them that the peers, the students have to value the ideas of, the, of their friends. Sometimes some students will say, no, no, my answer is only correct. Your answer is wrong. Such things shouldn't happen. So while doing group activities, the teachers have to keep roaming around the class having an eye on every group, finding what they are doing, guiding them in a proper way so that they find the proper solution. And in the interactive classroom, we see the four C. What are the four Cs? Communication. The students uh, share their thoughts, ideas. Uh, so their communicative skill improves. They know how to communicate how to express their answers when we put them into, give them more opportunities. Collaboration, students need opportunities to learn to work with others. So we have to uh, uh, group them up with their students and help them to work with their peers. Creativity, creativity uh, is connecting ideas in new ways. Creativity can be uh, about allowing uh, choice of how students access information, engage in learning or express their learning. Creativity is something that is going to stay with them, that is going to help them go a long way. The water cycle, the three states of water or whatever you teach with them is not going to help them after 20 years when they settle in a job. But once you improve their creative thinking skills, that will help them to survive any situation. So let us take every opportunity to inculcate the creative thinking in their minds. Let us improve their uh, creativity and uh, uh, the critical thinking. Students need opportunities to explore and interact with problems and open-ended activities. Analyzing data research in meaningful ways will help students look for creativity to solve problems. So these are the four C's which you will be uh, bringing in an interactive classroom. So when we do the classroom interactive, we will have the satisfaction that as uh, we have uh, done justification to the uh, students, to the teaching and learning process by teaching them not only EVS, but also improving certain social skills in them. So Next is helping the students with the spelling of odd words. Uh, do your teachers uh, really feel that this has to be done in the classroom? If yes, why? If no, why? Why should we help with the spellings of the class of the children? A few terms they will remember the main keywords. What is exactly to be written? For that, they should know the spelling. Other uh, sentence making, if it is wrong also, it can be acceptable in EVS, but uh, the keyword should be correct. Correct. Very good. And uh, sometimes in EVS also, uh, while correcting, uh, we uh, definitely look upon the uh, spelling errors and uh, we reduce marks. This is the area where the children lose lots of marks. Uh, very pathetic to know that some children are very good in answering orally. But when you ask them to write, they will make lots of spelling mistakes. So create a spelling wall in the classroom. When you are dealing with a lesson, this is recently practiced uh, in our school. We always have a strip of uh, chart papers and uh, uh, jump uh, board pins also. So whenever we introduce a difficult spelling in the classroom, like uh, irrigation, Kallanai Dam, or uh, Krishna Rajasam uh, Dam, Mysore, whatever it is, we immediately write it in the strip and put it on the board. We make the children to read the words. So this will be changed when the next lesson starts. So these spelling uh, strips will be there in the board till the lesson gets over, till the classwork gets over, till the activity gets over. 
So at least for two weeks, the spelling uh, charts will be there on the uh, notice board. So this will give the children an opportunity to repeatedly look at the spellings and to memorize the spellings also. Make a fun crossword. Crossword will also help them improve their spelling. Play word building in the classroom. This you can do as Saturday activity. Word building. The children will definitely uh, have uh, know the spelling of the word. Only if they know the spelling of the word, they can play this game. If they do not know, no hard and fast rules. Please teachers help them understand the spelling so that they retain it in their memory. Play sentence building. You can say a sentence and uh, they can pick one word from the sentence and they can make another sentence using that word. So all this will improve the language skills. Though we are EVS teachers, we have every responsibility of improving their language skills also. Toss around the spelling ball. Spelling ball, say one spelling, help the children, uh, I mean, say a word, help the children to say spell it out and that child will say another word Another uh, child in turn will say the spelling of it. So this goes on like a turn, like a train in the classroom. All these activities will involve the children enthusiastically when help them understand the spellings. Memory game. Write 10 words on the blackboard and allow the children to observe the spelling for one minute. Then erase the words and ask the children to write the spelling of odd words in their notebook. Spelling is something which is very, very important to be learnt by the students at the very small age. Uh, for example, uh, some spellings, uh, they will correctly misspell it. Uh, what, is, what is the correct way of writing? They will not write. They will correctly misspell it. So how else can we help them learn the spellings? We can uh, uh, split the word, split the word and help them uh, learn the spelling of the word. So these are some of the spellings I felt is little difficult for the children. They found it in the classroom. So split the word. Germ, in, at, ion. Germination. Photo, sin, the, sis. So this uh, worked out with the uh, remedial students. They uh, found it very difficult to keep in memory the spellings of hard words. While teaching communication, repeatedly insists that come communication it has two m so along with the teaching of concept along with the teaching of lots of skills it is our duty to improve the language skills it is our duty to improve the spellings of the children so let us split the spellings put up a, a spelling chart in the notice board let us do some activity and let us help in improving the spellings of the children. One day you may conduct a dictation test also. Hi ask them to highlight all the hard words while doing the lesson itself. Ask them to highlight all the hard words. And these hard words can be tested at any one time. All these activities can be done on a Saturday so that the one hour will go on usefully for the children. So these excuse are... Me. Excuse me. Sorry for the interruption. Yes, From this germination word, how I taught was since uh, our, our children learn phonetics, the sounds of the letters. So uh, I taught them like germination. Mm. T I O N makes shun sound in phonetics. Uh, yes, yes. It's easy for them to remember that shun sound. So germination. This is how I taught. Actually. Yes. Uh, anyway. Uh, see, we teachers have uh, different ways of uh, 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 teaching or helping the children. That is also the right way. Uh, helping them with the phonetic sound is also the right way. Sometimes uh, the children may not be able to understand, but the children may be good in uh, uh, phonetic sound, but still they have problem with uh, spelling. You can do this way also. You are very correct, madam. Phonetic, using phonetics to help the uh, spelling is also a right way. Splitting the words into smaller parts and helping them is also the right way of helping them with spellings. Ultimately, the children should not struggle to write the spellings of the words. So, uh, this is uh, some of the things which I uh, really wanted to because uh, in every um, monthly meeting, we discuss certain things. Sometimes uh, due to time constraint, we may not be able to cover up uh, fully. So I thought 
I'll take up a lesson and what are all the different parts that has to be dealt carefully. Uh, I will do it in the first session of the workshop. Hope uh, it was uh, useful uh, to you actually. Yes, um, an activity for you teachers, which you will be uh, submitting it. Uh, choose a topic of your choice and write a lesson planner under the following headings. Thank you, teachers. Uh, Thank you, teachers. Yes. Hope